China has discovered rare treasure resources on artificial islands that cost 30 billion yuan to build. Why does such a resource that is almost impossible to appear at sea appear on fiery cross island in China? What treasure is this? What is the significance of it, so that all countries in the world are jealous? Hi! Welcome to Hot Topics Time. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. What treasures were found on Fiery Cross Island? Fiery Cross Reef is a rock located in the Spratly Islands. China spent 30 billion yuan to build Fiery Cross Island, and at the same time, it also found a precious treasure under the island, freshwater resources. As we all know, China's freshwater resources are very short. The total freshwater resources are less than 2.8 trillion cubic meters, accounting for 6% of the world's water resources, while China's population accounts for more than 18% of the world's total. The freshwater resources detected on Fiery Cross Island this time are extremely rich. According to relevant data, 11 of the 27 measuring points have groundwater, and the reserves are very large, which can fully meet the daily water needs of the residents of Fiery Cross Island. In addition, fishermen and warships near the South China Sea can also get supplies on Fiery Cross Island. This major discovery is of great significance. This not only greatly reduces the pressure on logistical support, but also saves the cost of transporting groundwater. The discovery of freshwater resources provides favorable conditions for the infrastructure construction of Fiery Cross Island and provides strategic support for China's future construction and development in the South China Sea. Many international media have said that China is a lucky country, and they are envious of it. After all, on a global scale, there are many countries and regions that have reclaimed land from the sea, but they have not found fresh water resources. This not only increases the investment cost, but also may cut off the supply. The discovery of freshwater resources in the ocean is beyond our common sense and makes people feel unbelievable. However, the discovery of freshwater resources on Fiery Cross Island is also a true fact. So, where does the fresh water here come from? In fact, the appearance of fresh water is achieved through the fresh water lens. Simply put, what it does is filter fresh water from seawater. It is well known that seawater and freshwater have different densities and they form in different layers. Moreover, the process of the freshwater lens is to realize the separation of water and separate the freshwater from the seawater. This process is accomplished in three stages in total, first, desalination, second, stabilization of the water layer, and third, deposition. The amount of fresh water is often affected by atmospheric precipitation. But as long as these three stages can be stabilized and progress step by step, the fluctuation of fresh water volume is basically small. From the perspective of the formation process of fresh water, in fact, the amount of fresh water is still mainly supplied by atmospheric rainfall. As long as there is a large amount of atmospheric precipitation, even if too much fresh water enters the ocean, the fresh water stored in this fresh water lens will, will also continue. In addition, Fiery Cross Island can produce a large amount of freshwater resources because it has a tropical marine monsoon climate, so the rainfall is very rich, and the rainwater can be preserved after it seeps into the ground. At the same time, the seawater here is also distilled to form fresh water and store it on the seabed. The importance of this resource is no less than that of oil. Since this resource can support military use in the South China Sea, even foreign countries are envious. After all, fresh water resources in the ocean are very precious. To this end, China has installed an advanced sewage treatment system to ensure that groundwater resources are not polluted and the recycling of water resources is realized, thus further ensuring the fresh water resources of Fiery Cross Island. The construction of Fiery Cross Island and the protection of local resources are of extraordinary significance for maintaining peace and stability in the South China Sea. So, how was Fiery Cross Island built? At first, there was no Fiery Cross Island in that sea area, only Fiery Cross Reef. The area of Fiery Cross Reef is huge, with 108 square kilometers, almost twice the total area of Mischief Reef. 
Its location is very important because it is basically in the center of the southern part of the South China Sea. Therefore, Fiery Cross Island can not only provide navigation information and safety services for ships in the South China Sea, but also serve as a shipping dispatch center in the South China Sea. In 1987, at the request of the United Nations, China set up an international marine observatory on the Fiery Cross Reef. The International Ocean Observatory was officially opened in 1988. At present, this marine observation station has obtained millions of hydrometeorological observation data for China in the Nansha waters. Weather protection can be provided for all ships passing through the South China Sea. However, Fiery Cross Reef is still too small and too far away. Materials cannot be supplied in time, and personnel cannot be dispatched in time. It also caused great difficulties in China's territorial management. Therefore, China has also decided to undertake an unprecedented project, namely, reclamation of the sea. When it comes to land reclamation, everyone usually thinks that it is necessary to borrow giant cargo ships to transport sand, gravel and other materials to the shoal of the South China Sea for filling operations. This is our usual way of thinking, but if we use this method to reclaim the sea, we will face many problems. For example, to achieve sea reclamation, the amount of sand and gravel required is extremely large, and the price of land sand is much higher than that of sea sand, plus transportation costs. As a result, not only is the cost too high, but also the efficiency is very low. Around the Nansha reefs, most of them are large shoals, which contain a large amount of sea sand, and the most economical and effective method of reclamation is to use these sands for on-site mining. Of course, so much sand cannot be carried with grabs or shovels, but relies on a more efficient method of operation, blow filling. It generally means that after dredging, the mud water mixture in the mud tank is discharged to the offshore land through pipelines, and the mud is buried to remove the water in the mud to a certain height and make it useful. Playing a pivotal role in the reclamation project is the Sky Whale, the largest self propelled cutter suction dredger in Asia. During the reclamation operation, the Sky Whale mixed sea sand and sea water and launched it to a distance of 6,000 meters at a speed of 4,500 cubic meters per hour, blowing more than 100,000 cubic meters of sea sand into the sea every day. At the same time, the ship is equipped with the most powerful excavation system in Asia, and the reamer power reaches 4,000 kilowatts. After this sand reclamation project, the island and land area of Fiery Cross Reef is second only to Mischief Reef and Subi Reef, becoming the third largest island in the Nansha Islands. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news. We will see you in the next video.